Fascinating. Hello there, and welcome to this quick overview of Blueprint Function Libraries. So we may be familiar with functions. So within an actor, we always had the ability to add a function here on the left-hand side, which gives us um, a way of packaging some code that we can reuse elsewhere within this actor. But then it's embedded in this actor and can't be used elsewhere. So that's not that flexible. So what we can do is start by creating a blueprint function library. So if we come to blueprints here on the left hand side and go to blueprint function library, I'll call mine demo BPFL, which is my shorthand and open that up. So it looks like another sort of blueprint environment, but you'll note it doesn't have event begin play or event tick. It's just geared up for adding functions and then local variables that serve those functions. So it's added our first one. So one that I create at the beginning of every project is get GI, which just saves me the hassle of having to cast to the game instance whenever I want to reference it. So I create a blueprint function library function for that so I can access it elsewhere. So let's create one now. So I'll cast to the tutorial game instance. And then because we're casting, we have to state what type of object it is, which is, it is a game instance. So we can just say get game instance. And I want to have an output node, but I don't need the Boolean that it creates by default. I'll pull out my reference to the game instance and add that to the return node in, instead. And now that's our first blueprint function library function. So let's have a look at how we bring that into any other blueprint. So going back to our actor blueprint, if I now right click and ask for get GI, you'll see that there's our library, demo BPFL, get GI. So that's created a, a kind of inline function by having the execution pin in and out. But if we want to create a pure function, we can come back here and click pure on the top right hand corner, compile and save. And now when we go back, you'll see that the execution pins have gone and all we have is a pin to pull out a reference, but all that casting is happening within that function. So another one by extension that I use on many, many projects is I add a get PC as well for player controller because the player controller also houses a fair amount of functionality on a per player basis. So in a similar way, we cast to our player controller. And again, we have to just state that it is a player controller. And just a bit of repetition, but just to hammer home the point, get rid of the Boolean that is the sort of default parameter and then I'll make it pure as well. So if I come back here, right click, get PC. And there we go, there's our pure node, which now always references the player controller. So now any variables that are either in the game instance or the player controller, I can get. So for example here, I know I've got a color in my game instance. So I can now pull that out and I can get it, or of course I can set it as well. So, and I always put GI in front of my game instance variable so I know where they are. So there, for example, if that's part of a longer piece of code, I can also set that color and it affect anything else that's linked to it universally. So another place where I sometimes use a blueprint function library function 
is when I am adding a bit of craft to the experience and I want to take control of the player horn camera and fade in and out. So whether I'm switching between levels or, you know, if I've picked something up or if I'm wanting to launch a, a widget and I want to fade into that. So there's lots of potential uses, but if I then decide down the line, actually all those fades are too long, I need to cut them in half. I only have to come into the blueprint function library and change the function and the timing in here. And it will update universally across any of the places that it's used. So let's call it horn camera fade. So that requires Player controller once again and then from the player controller we can then access the player camera manager which finds the camera in the pawn related to the controller and we can say start fade for example start camera fade so again this is just a function so now here I can say all right I want to fade from on screen to opaque so from zero to one in the alpha range over three seconds if i don't put anything in there we won't see anything um, if you want a hard cut then you wouldn't put duration but then you would make sure that you clicked hold when finished if hold when finished isn't clicked then the fade will happen over a duration of three seconds but it will flip back because we're not holding so just a couple of kind of use cases obviously things can get a lot more complex but just to familiarize yourself with blueprint function libraries and how, how liberating they are really because now you kind of get the opportunity to use them all over your code so i hope that was of use live long and prosper